As an artist and an art collector, I know the value of supporting my fellow artists, but I also know the value of a dollar. And what that means is to use the relative poverty of my friends in order to find really good deals. Here are some techniques that I've employed over the years to get good art for next to nothing. One way is simply to, to offer to trade artwork with your friends. Now the problem always exists if your friends are a lot better than you, but you can use guilt and other emotions to try to wheedle good paintings away from them. If you have to buy and you're an artist, try to buy directly and wait to hear little tales of poverty and then, oh, I wish I could pay more, but hmm, that usually works. The last resort is to actually go to an art gallery. And what I have done in the past in that venue is to find a painting that I like, tell the dealer that I'm willing to wait till the show is over, and if it hasn't sold, because I'm an artist, I will offer half of the price plus, say, $50 or $100. And they hem and haw, and they hate the idea, but at the end of the show, sometimes you get lucky, and I, that actually has worked a number of times for me. My most shameful art acquiring moment came, and this is quite a confession, when a very talented artist was showing at a gallery run by kind of a crook who was going out of business and doing anything he could to try to scrounge up a little bit of money. So I bought something for really next to nothing so this guy could maybe pay his phone bill. And then later, a friend of the artist and I were talking and he made me feel so deeply ashamed that I actually contacted the artist, told the artist about it, and ended up sending additional monies directly to the artist because the dealer was unlikely to ever pay the artist anything without a lawsuit. Ah, that was a shameful moment in my life. But boy, oh boy, do I love that painting. This painting is done by my great-grandfather, who was a, an artist, businessman, and magician. And he was a wonderful guy. This was probably back in the 20s when he did this, or 30s. And it's um, a painting of Erie, Pennsylvania. This, he was such a wonderful guy. My twin brother and I knew him when we were very young, three or four, and we always used to just call him Nice Man Grandfather. His name was John Z. Miller, and a uh, terrific human being. My friend Larry Francis is probably the, the greatest person-slash-artist I know. He's incredibly talented, and he has such a beautiful vision of the world. Here's part of his painting of his Aunt Ruth hanging up laundry. Here's a still life by Larry. Beautiful. Boy, what a talented guy he is. Here's one also uh, of the Philadelphia area, and it's this little girl. You can really picture this, this little girl walking around on the the edge of a wall. This is on Ridge Avenue. Larry does etchings as well as paintings. This is an etching of a woman named Annette who, whose artwork we saw upstairs. We have two sculpt, sculptures by a friend named Jenny Baker who is now mostly painting but she is also a terrific sculptor. So here's one and here's the other one. They're very nice. She used to do painted sculpture back in the Academy. Here is a relief, a painted relief by Jenny Baker. Uh, it's actually kind of a, a painted relief sculpture, and I just love this. It's really beautiful. Uh, my wife and I love bird watching, and the idea of a little blue bird pecking at these berries, it's just charming as heck. Here's a, a painting. Um, I think it's in gouache by Jenny Baker, who did those wonderful sculptures downstairs. Uh, this is a painting by another guy I went to art school with named Doug Martinson, and he 
uh, paints very differently nowadays. Uh, he also is a you know pretty successful artist who shows in New York. In um, his student days, he was a, a big fan of the California artist Richard Diebenkorn, and I think his work in those days reflected that. This is a painting by a woman that I went to art school with named Angie Kalmus, and uh, she had a very interesting style, kind of related to Cubism in a way, but very smart, very interesting artist. Here is a pastel by none other than Scott Noel, who I just made a couple films about Scott. In addition to doing oil paintings, does these marvelous pastel uh, drawings. And this is a quick figure study. Quite a talented guy. This is done by a friend named Pat Connors, who's another very good realist coming from the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. And he does these beautiful landscapes of the Schuylkill River and the bridges. This is a portrait of me by my friend Fred Danziger, who's an incredibly good realist painter who also shows in a gallery in New York City. He's mainly doing landscapes now, but boy, he, he is a meticulous realist and uh, a wonderful teacher. I teach with him at an art school. Really good at it and incredibly good artist.